All right, today we're gonna to make an augmented reality app in six minutes, again. Okay, so just an aside before we get started here, I was coming up with the content for this video and I randomly thought of making an AR mirror, like using one phone to send its video feed to another phone that displays that video feed on a marker on the first phone. It sounds weird and totally useless, and it definitely is, but I feel like there's some use case here that I'm missing, so maybe let me know in the comments if you guys can think of anything. Anyway, I really wanted to start paying more attention to the videos you guys suggested, so in order to help the most people at one time, we're gonna have to remake a video that I made like a year ago. So apparently it's the only video that I've ever made that people actually watch, because I still get comments on it every day. Now this would normally make me super happy, but all the comments are problems and errors that people are having. Now, most of the errors are because Unity and Vuforia both changed, which is to be expected, because this tech is rather new-ish, so it's constantly changing. Uh, I'm sure this video is gonna be outdated as soon as I post it, but let's get it anyway while we can, because the last thing I want is people trying to get into this stuff and having problems and getting discouraged. So today we're gonna use the Unity 3D video game engine and the Vuforia plugin to make an augmented reality app that will work on both Android or iOS. The little bit of coding that we need to do will be done in C Sharp, and the Vuforia plugin will allow us to detect ground planes so that we can place virtual content on top of the real world using our phone's camera in real time. So we're not gonna do the whole app from the intro with the effects and everything, but that's just basic Unity stuff. Uh, what we will do is get this little monster guy walking around your table using an on-screen mobile joystick. If all goes well, this will be the easiest tutorial that you've ever followed. So first of all, we need to make sure your phone supports Vuforia's ground plane detection. So make sure your phone is in the list of supported devices. I will link to this down in the description below. So the only thing you'll need as far as software is the free version of Unity 3D. If you don't already have it, go to unity3d.com and click Get Unity. Now I'm using version 2018.2. If this version is no longer available, go to the older versions of Unity and download 2018.2.0. During the installation process, make sure to install the packages for iOS or Android, depending on what type of phone you have, and make sure to install Vuforia support. Once everything is downloaded, let's start a new project, put six minutes on the clock, and jump into Unity. All right, I know what you're thinking. How did one guy get so corny? Well, let me just tell you, it didn't come overnight. All right, so the first thing we need to do is get Vuforia set up. So if we go to File, Build Settings, we need to switch our platform to Android or iOS. I'm gonna go iOS, because that's what I'm working with currently. Now, go to player settings and uh, XR settings, and we want to enable Vuforia Augmented Reality. So if you're on Android, enable it in the Android settings as well. So for now, let's get out of this, and the first thing we need is an AR camera. So we're going to delete the main camera, go to Game Object Vuforia, and put in an AR camera. It's gonna ask to import assets. Now if we click on the AR camera, let's go to Open Device con Configuration, and under Device Tracker, click Track Device Pose, and make sure this tracking mode is positional. Now the next two things we need are the Vuforia uh, Ground Plane Finder, and we need a Vuforia Ground Plane Stage. So the Plane Finder is what finds the you know uh, horizontal planes in your real world environment, and the Ground Plane Stage is what gets uh, moved to the position of the ground in the real world. So whatever we put as a child of this ground plane stage will show up on the surface in your camera view. So now there's a couple settings we need to fix here. So on the plane finder, go over here in the inspector and change the mode to interactive and uh, uncheck duplicate stage. So now what's gonna happen is if we were to build this out and we put uh, anything under the ground plane stage as a child, if we click the screen, uh, Vuforia is going to place an object at that position in the real world. So now you can see here that this anchor stage is looking for a ground plane stage. So let's drag it in here. Now, the next thing we need is the joystick so that we can move that little character around. So let's go to import package, cross platform input. Okay, now go to project, standard assets, cross platform input, prefabs, and you'll see a mobile single stick control. Drag that into the scene here. So we don't need this jump button, so let's delete that. Now we have to make sure to add a UI event system or else any of the on-screen input won't be handled. Now go to the mobile joystick and change the movement range to 25. And on the mobile single stick control, there is a UI canvas. We wanna add a canvas scaler to this and set this to scale with screen size. That way our joystick will scale appropriately on different screen resolutions. Now the current behavior of our app is that whenever we click on the screen, the AR object is gonna get repositioned, which is good, but 
On this plane finder script, this content positioning behavior does not check if your finger is over a UI element. So every time we go to move this joystick, for example, uh, the AR content is, get, is gonna get repositioned. So the correct way to fix this would, would be to remove this content position behavior script and uh, write our own since Vuforia does not allow you to edit this. But for the sake of this tutorial, we're just gonna create a toggle to turn that behavior on or off. So right click on the joystick here and create a UI toggle. Let's move its anchor to the top right and position it up in the corner of the screen. So on value changed here, we wanna drag in this plane finder and we wanna to toggle its behavior on or off when the toggle is pressed. So go to game object here and do uh, set active. Now, once the AR object is placed in the real world, we should probably set the toggle to off. So if you go to the plane finder in the advanced section of the content behavior, uh, content positioning behavior, you'll see there's an on content placed uh, unity event. So if we add something to this, we can drag in the toggle and we want to set the toggle to off. So we can go to toggle, bool is on, and leave this unchecked. So now we need to add our monster. We're just going to grab a free monster from the asset store. So if we go to window, general, asset store, in here type in character monster and sort by free only. The first one is the one that we're going to use. So click that and import it. So now that we have our monster, click it in the assets folder and go to prefab monster and drag that as a child of our ground plane stage. Change its scale to 0.1 across the board. Okay, so now we want to be able to play this monster's walk and idle animations that it came with. So go to window animation and animator to bring up the animator window. So you'll see that it will default to this monster's animator here. Let's just delete everything in there for now. So now we want to bring back in the monster's uh, idle and walk animation. So find both of those down here in the animation folder. So idle should be the fourth one in, drag that in first. A couple away from that should be the walk animation, so also drag that in. So first of all, we need to create two triggers for these animations. So go to the parameters and add a trigger. Uh, call the first one idle and add another trigger and call it walk. Now click on this idle animation here and make a transition to walking and then click walking and make a transition to idle. So on the first transition from idle to walk, uncheck has exit time and just drag this bar all the way down because we don't want to worry about transitions for now. Under conditions, we want this condition to be walk. So choose the walk trigger from here. Now do the same for the walk to idle transition. Uncheck has exit time, drag both of these bars down, and add a condition for idle. Now the last thing we need to do to these animations to get them to work properly is get them to loop. So if you click on the idle animation, you'll see it's idle clip up here. Click on that to reveal it down here in the project, and click on this animation and go to edit, and check loop time. Now we need to do the same thing for the walk animation. So apply that, go to the walk animation, Reveal that in the project, click edit, and check loop time, and hit apply. All right, so now we need to create our character controller script. So go back to the scene view, and then in the assets folder, right click and create a new C -sharp script, and call it character controller. Double click that to open it in Visual Studio. Okay, so now the first thing we need to do in the script is create a private const float speed, and set that to 0.1. We next need a private animator, and just call that anim. Now, if you've never used Unity before, uh, the start function here that gets generated by default gets called once when the application starts, and the update function gets run in a loop on every frame. So if our application runs at, say, 60 frames a second, the update function gets called 60 times a second. So inside the start function, we first need a reference to our animator component. So do anim equals get component animator. This works because our character controller script is going to be placed on our monster game object, which has an animator component. Now inside the update function, we're going to get our input from the joystick. So up at the top, go uh, add a using directive for Unity standard assets cross-platform input. And then inside the update function, uh, make a float x and set that equal to cross-platform input manager dot get axis horizontal. And then do the same thing for the vertical axis and set that to y. Uh, this will give us a value between 0 and 1 for our uh, X and Y floats based on the joystick input. Now the first thing we need to handle is the turning of our character. So we can do transform.eulerangles equals new vector 3, pass in transform.eulerangles.x and transform.eulerangles.z because we don't want it to move on either of those axes, but we do want the character to turn on the Y axis. So inside there go mathf.atan2, pass in X and Y, and multiply that by mathf.radians to degrees. This will convert our x and y uh, values that are between 0 and 1 to a usable degree that we can turn our character with. Now we only want the character to move if uh, x does not equal 0 and the y input does not equal 0. This way our character's um, turning won't get 
reset whenever we let up on the joystick. Now the next thing we want to handle is the movement. So create a vector 3, call it movement, and set it equal to a new vector 3 where uh, we pass in x for x, we set uh, the y to 0, and we pass in y for the z. Now we can do transform.position plus equals transform.forward, which is the forward vector of our monster. Multiply that by, by time.delta time, which is the time in between frames, and multiply that by the speed of our character. And then when we're moving, we want to set the animation trigger to walk so that our walk animation plays. Now we only want to do this if the x or y input does not equal zero, or else we can assume that we're not moving and we're not getting joystick input, so we can play the idle animation. Now the last thing that we need to do is create a function that gets called when our ground plane stage get, gets repositioned. Because our monster is a child of the ground plane stage and it's moving around. So whenever the ground plane stage gets repositioned, we want to set the local position of our monster to vector3.0. Now we're pretty much ready to go here. So if we minimize this and go back to Unity, we need to click on our monster and add our character controller script to this monster. Now we need to make sure our place character get function gets called when the ground plane stage gets repositioned. So under, uh, let's see, yeah, plane finder, go to the on content placed uh, event and add a function to that. Grab, grab the monster, drag that into here, and then we're going to get the character controller script that is on the monster and call the place character function. Now all that we have left to do is get this thing on our phone. So if we go to file build settings, if we're building for iOS, uh, go to your player settings and go to other settings. We need to add a bundle identifier. So go com dot, say your name, for example, and then your app name. I'm going to call this, I don't know, AR test monster. So make sure something is in here for the camera usage description. And let's change the target minimum iOS version to 11.0. And that should be it. Now, if you click build, uh, we'll save this to our desktop and we'll just call it uh, monster iOS test. Okay, so if you're building out to iOS, open up Xcode and find this project. If you don't have an Apple developer account, you can sign up for one on their website. It is totally free. But once you have that, you should have a team in this list here. So choose your team and click play, and this thing should go right onto our phone. All right, yep, we placed our guy. Everything looks pretty good. If we hit the toggle button, we can click to place him again and then use our joystick to make him walk around. I wish I chose a different model. He has got quite a pointy crotch there. Maybe we should have gave him pants. Now, if you're building out for Android, click on the Android player settings here and do the same thing. Enter in a bundle identifier, com.yourname, dot your app name, and make sure to uncheck uh, Android TV compatibility. And for minimum API level, I'm gonna go Nougat. Okay, sorry, my desktop is a mess, but if you're on Android and you click build, it will generate an APK on your desktop. If you've got your uh, Android NDK and JDK paths set up properly in, in uh, Unity, you can hit build and run with your phone plugged in and it should go right on there. If that is not the case, like me, you can go to, well, you can download a program called ADB and navigate to where that is on your computer. So let's drag in the APK into the same folder that our ADB exists and we can go to terminal and then we can CD into that directory. So once we're in that directory, we should see ADB and we should see our APK. So with your Android phone plugged in, make sure you have developer options turned on on your phone. But you can go dot slash ADB devices. As long as your computer sees your device, you will see it listed here. And then you can do dot slash ADB install and then the APK name, so monster android.apk and this should get our app on your android phone all right so that's it that's all i got for today hopefully this video helped you guys out if it did definitely subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments what you guys want to see in the next one goodbye